this short tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use tile maps, uh, but animate them. So if you've ever done this, it could be done in Game Maker before, uh, and it was pretty complex to do in Game Maker, but it's fairly straightforward to do in here. You do need to know a little bit of code. You need to know how the tile map works. Um, but hopefully this should make it fairly easy for you. So let's just get into it. This is what the outcome is going to look like. I've just put these down here to see that these are not animating. Um, and we'll get started. So I'm going to just open up a different project. And I'm going to create a new scene. I'll just call this node um, world. And I'm going to add a tile map to it. Okay, so I've got this tile map here. I'm going to go over and add a new tile set, new tile set, and click on that, and we'll load up our tile set, which I've just got these overworld tiles from an old game, Fantasy Star uh, number one. Now, this one here, it actually took me a little bit of time, and I've made it a little bit more complex here. I've just downloaded these. I do need to make sure that when I import them, though, I set the preset to 2D pixel. Wish there was a way to default that. If there is, just drop a comment below and let me know because that would be really handy. And I'm going to make a new atlas. Um, so I'm going to select a region and I'm just going to select this region up here to start with just because I need to get some settings over here and it doesn't seem to let me do it until you select the region first. So the sub tile size is going to be 16 by 16. I'm just going to put one on all of these because in mine you can see that there is a gap of one pixel between each one. And uh, snap options are going to be 16 by 16 with a separation of one. Uh, and I think there is an offset of one. Okay, so now I can select this region here. See, and this still does it to me. Uh, texture offset, one, one. Nope, I'll zoom in. This actually, this is like the hardest part of this tutorial because I couldn't figure out how to do this last time either. Oh, here we go, shape offset, one, one, shape trends. I just put all of these on one. Still didn't work. Subtitle spacing, that might actually be it. It is. Okay, so the last thing that I put on one was the one that I'm after. You can see I'm not a master at Godot, but um, I have figured it out. So anyway, this is just we're just doing this for demonstration purposes, this part here. I want to make a few tile sets first. So icon, I'll just pick that one, that's fine. I'll give it a name, this is going to be uh, Town Tiles, and click OK. So then I'm going to add a new atlas. You could do this with auto tiles as well, um, but what you'll see down here, my water tiles have been set up very specifically. Now you could do this with any kind of layout, but the, you may have to adjust the code a little bit to accommodate for the math that's behind it. So essentially what's going to happen is this this, this one, this one, this one, and this one are going to be our main water tiles. Um, they are going to animate, but they're going to cycle from this one to this one to this one to this one to this one, then back to this one to this one to this one to this, one to this etc. and go through like that. Now, it's pretty easy. All I need to do is to get the coordinates of this and check to see that if it's the water tiles and not the town tiles, we don't want to animate those. If it's the water tiles that we're going to define, then we're going to increase the coordinates by one, by one, by one, by one, until it gets to here. Now you'll notice that there's five in each one, so that makes it even easier because we can use uh, modulo uh, to determine whether we are at the end of a sequence or at the start of a sequence. So I'm just going to select all this water here. Uh, I could do it with this one as well, but I'm just going to leave that out for now. And I'm going to call that water tiles. Now I'm not going to put any collision on this. I would put the collision on a different um, map or even just draw a collision because I plan to use grid based movement. Um, but let's go ahead and add some tiles. So I'll go back to my scenes of tile map. I've got town tiles and water tiles. So let's go ahead and just add a few of these. I'll have to go ahead and change this to 16 by 16. And very quickly, I will go in project settings. I know it seems like it's taken a while till I actually get to setting it up, but I think it's pretty important to kind of know what I'm actually doing. I'm just setting the width and height to 320 by 200. Uh, I'm going to set the test width to 1280 by uh, 720. I think that's in the same kind of, I'm not sure if it is, but it won't matter in this case. Um, keep close. All right. 
So I can zoom in, I can put a few of these tiles down here and chuck a few of these. And then I'm gonna put in some water tiles. So I'm gonna select this water and I'm gonna bring it out. I wish there was a way to make these smaller. There, there probably is, right? Like is there, oh, there we go. That's something new every day. Okay, so I've got this and I'm just gonna throw one of these here. Uh, one of these here. So I'm just using that first column. Otherwise, uh, they're not going to be aligned properly. You'll see once I do it. Okay, so I'm going to add a script to this. I will need a timer. So I may as well just add that timer in now. Um, what the timer is going to do is we'll set it to idle, uh, auto start, and wait time. 0.5 is probably a bit better. So it's going to wait 0.5 between each updating the animation cycle. And then we're going to add in a script. Now I'm just going to bring up my other script so I don't have to try and do this part from memory. Let's whack it over here for a sec. And let's go script. Okay. And I'll call this, um, oops, I just deleted some code in the other one. I'll call this here auto animate. And I shouldn't use caps, or I probably could. Of course, it is technically a class. Okay. All right, so what we've got here is our little default thing. I'm gonna get rid of that. And I'm going to declare two variables at the top here. One's gonna be timer equals false. And then another is gonna be um, called animate forwards. And that's gonna be set to false. Actually, it's gonna be set to true at the start. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda of oscillate between animating forwards and backwards. There, there is a better way to do this, and I'm sure there is. Uh, the code would be a li little bit less readable, so I focused on readability here, because if you've noticed, my channel is kinda of aimed towards high school students, um, and I'm gonna to aim to have more advanced uh, tutorials on here as well. So we need the process. We're not gonna do this with physics. We're just gonna use the process. We won't end up using delta. So you'll get some warnings down the bottom that says delta's not being used, but it's not important. So we're gonna say if timer equals true. So if the timer has triggered, and let's go ahead and hook that up now before we go too much further. So I'll click on the timer, set the timeout, and that's down here. Uh, timer equals true. So when the timer times out, it's gonna set that variable to true and it's gonna then run this update code. So what we need to do is we need to get every single cell in our tile map. So for cell in get used cells. Now, we only wanna update and check the water ones. There's no point in updating or checking to see if the other ones uh, or updating those. So we just wanna get the ones by ID. Now, this is where it gets a little bit confusing. So the ID starts at zero. And I'll go back to this tile map and go up to here and kind of show you what I'm talking about. So if I click on this and click on I here, this is the ID, the number, not the name. So we're actually gonna check for all tiles using ID one. Let's go up here by ID one, hit that and enter. So for every tile in here, we're just going to um, get the tile coordinates. So var tile equals get auto tile coordinates. Now, get cell auto tile coordinates, sorry. Now, I know we didn't use an auto tile, we used an atlas, but it's actually pretty much working on the same system and it does work. The auto tile itself just has some extra things like the bit mask and lets you kind of auto paint. Um, I did try setting that up with this, but it didn't really work. Maybe I didn't set it up right. So I'm just going with the Atlas and I can manually put these things in. So get cell auto tile coordinates, but I wanna get the cell.x, that's this cell that we're currently working with, cell.y. I am gonna assume a little bit of programming knowledge here. I'm not going to explain every single thing uh, that I do. Now, this is the bit, we've got the tile, we've got the cell. So this is the tile coordinate, which is like this here. So this would be, for this ID, 0, 0, 0, 1, uh, sorry, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, et cetera. This would be 1, 1, so it's 1 on the Y. It doesn't go actual pixel coordinates. That would be 
really silly. Uh, so Godot has actually been sensible in allowing us to use the coordinates of the uh, atlas. So in here, we are going to check if the next tile that it's going to update, if it's going to be here, we're going to set it so that it animates backwards instead of going forwards. So if int tile.x plus one modulo five. Now I know that there's five tiles in each one and it's going to start at zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. So if five modulo five, if that equals zero, we know that we're here. And also if we do this one here, which is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, 10 modulo five also equals zero. So we know we are at the end there. Uh, but I'm only going to do this if animate forwards is true. If this is the case, I'm going to set animate forwards uh, equals false. There's probably a way I could write this in a single line that just switches between the two. I just wanted to keep it fairly simple. And I'm going to do the same thing, but going backwards. If tile.x equals zero, sorry, tile.x modulo five equals zero, and I have made a mistake there. It should be just int tile.x. Um, the reason we have to do that is for some reason, tile.x is a float and uh, we can't use modulo with a float. So we need to just convert it to an integer and animate forwards uh, and not animate forwards. We're gonna set that to be true. And what have I done there? What's happened? I think I've got too many brackets. There we go. I'll make this a little bit bigger. I don't like that. All right, then we are going to check to see if animate forwards is true or false. And if it is, we are going to um, change the tile in that direction. Now you'd think, oh, can I just put it in here or here? No, because this is only gonna trigger every five updates essentially. So we're gonna put it in its own thing. Um, I could make its own function for it. Fine. If animate forwards. And we're going to set the cell. We can't use set cell V, we need to use set cell. So set cell, we're gonna set cell.x, cell.y. That's the current cell that we're working with. Not sure why it doesn't let us just put in a vector two for that, um, but the tile integer is gonna be one because that's what we're, that's the tile set that we're working with. You could actually change things. So you could kind of have all your animations in separate um, IDs here and then just cycle through those IDs. But I did try that and it always resets to the very first icon, either the icon or the very first zero zero tile. So you'd have to also manually update the thing anyway. It's not gonna save you any time. Um, now we're just gonna say false, false, false. Uh, I'm not entirely sure that that's necessary. Um, I'm not 100% on how, on how the Godot script works yet. Uh, but then we are gonna say what tile to change it to. This is just, I'm not sure what these are. You can hold control, click on that. It says uh, flip X, flip Y and transpose. We don't wanna do any of those things. And I'll go back to here. Vector two, this is gonna be the new tile coordinate. So we've got the tile here and we're just gonna say tile.x plus one tile.y. Okay, we don't wanna change the y coordinates, at least not in my tile set. Your math might be different, but mine just goes across like this. So I'm gonna go tile.1 plus one, tile.x plus one, tile.x plus one, etc. And then we're just gonna take this exact same code, copy it here. If not, animate forward. Um, that's gonna be minus one. Now, lastly, I need to set the timer back to false. And I'm gonna hit play. And this should animate those water tiles and it shouldn't animate any of the others. So there's those water tiles that are animating. They go forward, they go backwards. They go forward, they go backwards. These ones are not animating. You'll see that if I just did this, get used cells,
all the tiles animate. They all go through, uh, or actually in this case, they all flip to the water one because we've told it here to change to the water one. Um, if we didn't actually tell it that, there's no option not to tell it that though, um, then it will just keep on kind of doing this really bizarre animation. So I'm just getting it by ID and the ID is one. I could probably put an enumerator in here to say one is water and then just type water in and so on. Um, but for now, this is this is a, a pretty straightforward way to get an animated tile set uh, into your game. And it means that you don't have to have like multiple tile sets in this case. I know some tile sets are gonna have layers. These old school ones don't really have that. They're more just everything's kind of built into it and you build it around the um, tile set options itself. So you can see in this one here that if I wanna have mountains, well, I've got to have them on the grass. I don't have any option to have them anywhere else. Uh, and this kind of weird wall, whatever it is, it's got to be on that particular snow. There is a desert variant of it, etc. So that is that is the tutorial. I hope it helped you out. And um, let me know if there were any improvements I could make to it.